and welcome back to a new video about controller design and we continue with the root locus method and this is our example number two in this example we continue with the p controller design we will look at the calculations and verify our calculations using simulations in matlab so let's look at our second example so in this example we will see a third order system which will be controlled by a p controller and this is our controller in cascade with a plant and there is a unity gain feedback configuration the plant is given by this expression which is 1 over s times s plus 1 times s plus 3 so it is a third order system and the controller is again given as a constant k so we have the design specifications the following are given the overshoot must be less than 10 percent or 0 0.10 and the settling time in the 2% criterion must be less than 10 seconds. Now, we will look at the solutions. First, we need to determine, of course, how we can work through uh, toward these specifications. Now, for that, we need a design point. So we will need to determine the parameters from these uh, specifications. So the solution says, first step is use your overshoot which is 0 0.10 at the edge actually of this maximum allowed value and from there calculate the damping ratio zeta using this formula so if i substitute the value for mp overshoot i will get 0 0.591 now from the settling time formula expression for 10 seconds and i set it at 10 seconds i can calculate the absolute damping omega sigma uh, d which is 4 over the settling time will be 4 over 10 will be 0 0.4 radians per second this is the real part of our design point which will be uh, given shortly the omega d is the imaginary part of our design point it is geometrically calculated using sigma d times the tangent of r cosine of the zeta now i have omega uh, sigma d and i also have the zeta so if you just substitute the values you will get very close to 0 0.55 and this is our imaginary part so i have then the following from these values dominant close to poles can be then written or in this form so minus sigma d plus or minus j omega d or minus 0 0.4 plus or minus j 0 0.55 now from here I need to determine or select a design point that can be one of these poles. So we can take minus 4, 0 0.4 plus j 0 0.55 or minus 0 0.4 minus j 0 0.55. I take most time the one with the positive imaginary part. So my design point will be the following. P1 is 0. Point, minus 0 0.4 plus j 0.55 and this is the plot i have in this case without the control of our plan just in unity gain configuration and this is just one you can see that there are three poles at the origin which is given by this s equal, equal to zero we have a pole at minus one you can see that in here s plus one and there is a pole at minus two which is given by s plus two and this shape of this root locus uh, is for this plant in the unity gain feedback configuration so what i need is of course determine the required value of k in order to stay below these maximum values for settling time and overshoot so let's look at it what we have to do in the next steps so the root locus equation first is given by this expression one plus the loop transfer function is equal to zero so the ls is our loop transfer function or loop gain and that will be given in this system as k times our plant and what is our plant plant is one over s plus one over s times s plus one times s plus two and the control is just k so i now substitute this expression in here then we have the following expression so one plus k times the plant is equal to zero if i now simplify this just work out this fraction i will multiply the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation by 
the denominator of this blue part, I will have then this expression. Now, if I now isolate k, so that will be the following expression. k is will equal to minus s times s plus 1 times s plus 2. So it will be actually this term will be replaced to the right hand side of this equation. Now, I need to know what the value of k is in magnitude. So I will evaluate the value of k at the design point, which was this p1. So I will evaluate this, just substitute actually for s p1 as shown here. Now, if I want to calculate that, let's substitute that in. I have then the first term and the second term and the, uh, and the third term. Now I can simplify this. This is then the result. So I have a minus 0.4 here and I also have a 1, just actually the effective real value will be 0.6. The imaginary part states at j 0.55. In a similar form, I have this expression for the third term. Now, this is just a complex expression. And I want to know what the length or the magnitude of this expression is. So that means calculate the magnitude of the value of k, evaluate it, of course, at the design point. So that is the next step. Calculate the magnitude of the controller k. We have then the following. You just take the square root of each part actually of the squares of the real part and the imaginary part so as you can see that here it is for the first term this is for the second term and this is for the third term and that will result in close to 0 0.94 so 0 0.937 this is our controller gain for this design and what we have then is we require p controller with a gain of 0.937. So we have a controller as shown here. This gain of, uh, of the value of k doesn't really have to be exactly this. So you need to actually check if this is really what you want. For, because we have set in our at the beginning to determine the design point that the settling time was exactly 10 seconds and also the overflow was 10%. So we are actually at the edge of our specification. So if you take some headroom, some, some, uh, some safety margin, then the design point will be, of course, different. So this is probably the absolute maximum for our controller game. And we will simulate and we will check what will happen. And of course, in this analysis, we have assumed that the dominant close to poles will determine the total dynamics of our system, which might be not correct, but this is the way the root locus uh, method is uh, carried out. So let's look at it in more detail in this plot. So these are the two, three dots actually here. So the open system poles were given here as a cross here, there's a cross and another cross here at zero, minus one and a minus two. And by selecting actually this gain, these three poles have moved actually to these three positions. So this pole at minus two will move actually to the left side. So you will actually don't see the effect of this uh, very much. But these two poles will come to each other and will break out at this point and then make actually these two uh, complex pole pairs. And these two pa uh, complex pole pairs, we assume that these are actually the dominant poles. So we are actually, the, our calculations are based actually on these two poles. So let's check that using the simulation results. So I have now plotted the root locus plot and also the unit step response of the closed loop system with this calculated value for our controller gain. So what is the result? The left side is our root locus plot and the associated unit step response is shown on the right. What you see is actually that the yellow part is where we actually uh, don't want our close to poles. But what you see is that the close to poles, these uh, pink dots actually, and this is the third pole, these poles are actually in the yellow region. We didn't know that, of course, beforehand. We just calculated and we assumed that our poles will be at the edge of the allowed region because the allowed region is given by this white area and the yellow area is of course determined by this absolute damping ratio 
I mean absolute damping line and also these zeta lines which will be of course determined by our overshoot. So we have actually assumed that the close to poles were here at the intersection of the absolute damping line and also the zeta lines. But that's not correct, it is a little bit to the right side. So we are actually inside the forbidding region. What does it mean actually for our unit step response? Let's check that. We want to have the overshoot max 10% and also our setting time was max 10 seconds. If I look at the overshoot, it is 12.6%, a little bit larger. So that's actually not what we wanted. And I see that the setting time is 9.6 seconds approximately. So that is, so this is definitely not okay. But setting time is below 10 seconds, so that's okay. But there's one problem still, the overshoot is uh, too much. So I want 10% max, I have 12.6. I need to solve this problem. So in summary, the overshoot is larger than what's actually uh, uh, allowed, but the setting time is okay. So I want to adjust this system, my controller gain, by keeping the setting time, of course, below 10 seconds, but reducing the overshoot. And I will do that using the controller tuning tool of MATLAB. So I will again produce a root locus and a unit step response and for a different value. So that's the, actually the next step. So I've figured out uh, by uh, playing around with the gain and I have now also plotted this uh, root locus plot and also the unit, uh, associated unit step response. This is the plot I have. I have just changed the controller gain from 0 0.937 to 0 0.85. So it is a little bit change, but you can see that the overshoot now is 10%. So that's at the edge, so you can say that's okay. But I see that the setting time is now a little bit larger than, the, uh, I mean, that the overshoot is 10%, and the setting time is a little bit larger than 10 seconds. So you might say, can we, is that okay? Maybe. So we need to, maybe well, we need to lower this. But if I now look at the poles again, the close to poles at the, in the root log plot, I can see that they are still around at the same point. But a little bit change already has improved the overshoot. But I have now a problem with my settling time. So the problem is actually shifted from the overshoot to the settling time. Still not the best solution. Let's try another one. So the following attempt. This is, of course, a summary. The following attempt is, again, lowering your P controller gain. I have now made it almost 0 0.5, and I have now made this plot. And I have, I have zoomed in, actually, in the actual uh, action, because the third pole is around here, and that's really not uh, the uh, interesting part in this analysis. These two poles are still in the forbidding region, actually, of this yellow uh, region of our root locus plot. So we can actually in theory say, uh, say that this is still not the way we want to have our close to poles. But since it's a third order system and we are and we and our calculations or formulas for the overshoot and also setting time are based on pure second order system, we might have or should have some deviation in our result and uh, compared to our calculations. So if I now look at this I can say this is definitely not going to work, but if I look at the uh, unit step response, I can see that the settling time is now 8.66, so that's fine. And, and I also see that the overshoot is almost 1%, or exactly 1% in this case. So both of them are all fine. But we will see that the rise time and also the different uh, uh, parameters will change. So both of them are okay, so I can say, Overshoot is 1%, less than 10%, definitely less than 10%, and setting time is 8.66 seconds, and also definitely less than 10 seconds. So this this is this looks like the best solution, because the overshoot is very, very uh, small, and also the setting time is much smaller than the 10 seconds, which is allowed. So I have now a controller, which will do the job. So let's look at the simulation result in summary. So what we have is the following plot. We have now plot the three uh, systems, three close-up systems. T1 is the one with the close-up system with the P controller of 0 0.937. So that was actually our first design. The orange line, T3, 
has a gain, the P controller gain of 0 0.85. And this yellow line, T3, has, there's a closed uh, system, has a P controller of 0 0.52, which is also actually our final uh, tuning tuned value. So I can already see without going into a lot of details that the blue one is the fastest and the yellow one is actually the, the slowest one. That is actually uh, due to the uh, fact that you decrease the controller gain, so you put actually less power in your system, so the first uh, response of your system is slow. That, make, that makes actually, that's the actual reason why we have a rise time actually, which is now smaller for the blue one and it's larger for the yellow one. We can see that in the plot also, or the table here, the P controller gain will now decrease from 0 0.937 to 0 0.85 to 0 0.52. And I can see that this is the T1 and T2 and T3, which is the close transfer function. I can see that the overshoot is now, for the first one, is 12.6, but it will decrease to almost 1%. But the setting time is now 9.6 for the first case, but it will decrease to 8.7 approximately seconds. But you can see that the rise time is first in the first case 2.84 seconds and then 3.12 seconds and then 5.38 seconds so this is approximately doubled by actually decreasing the gain control again from 0 0.937 to 0 0.52 so that's actually what you uh, what your penalty is actually in this case so you gave away some gain but you will of course need to also slow your system down if you want to have a lower controller gain but the thing is the rise time was not a specification in our uh, example so we can say this is definitely one of the solutions for our problem so that was our f second example about a p controller design using the root logs method and we have discussed a third order system if you have questions or comments please let me know and i will try to answer them as soon as possible thanks again for your attention see you next time and take care